hello 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 so let's start with the first question which of the following accounting standard deals with accounting for inventories so when we are talking about accounting for inventories we must be aware about what is the accounting standard and what is the end as that relates to inventory so the options are as1 as2 as3 as10 or none of the above so friends we have to remember that this is the accounting standard 2 AS2 issued by Institute of Chartered Accountants of India is the one which deals with inventory talks about valuation of inventory how you would record the inventory in your financial statements so all the related aspects they are covered in AS2 now you must also be aware about the concept of Indian accounting standards or NDAs now the NDAs2 it relates to inventory so AS2 as well as NDAs2 they are both related to inventories so the answer to this particular question is going to be option number B AS2. Next question, the inventories of a trading concern would comprise mainly of raw material, work in process or partially completed products, products purchased for resale in their existing form, all of the above or none of the above. Now there can be different nature of the businesses which can be there. One can be a trading concern and another one can be a manufacturing concern. So manufacturing as the name suggests they are going to do manufacturing. They are going to get the raw material. They are going to process it and they are going to make the finished product. So if there is a car manufacturing company Maruti is there. So it is going to manufacture the car from scratch. It is going to take all the raw materials. It may be steel. It may be anything else and it is going to build in a car itself. So raw material is being processed and a car is being manufactured. And when we talk about it from the dealership perspective, it is simply a trading concern. It is getting a ready-made car and it is simply reselling it to the customer. So this would be a trading concern. Similarly, in any particular case, this is going to be true. Suppose there is a, a manufacturing concern which is manufacturing say pins it, it is manufacturing these pens and these pens are ultimately going to reach the wholesalers or the retailers and they are going to only sell the pens not manufacture it it will it will be the case with each and every item uh, maybe the case with these kinds of bottles maybe the case with the mobile phones for every product this is going to be the case there is going to be manufacturing concern and there is going to be a trading concern which is going to simply buy and sell the finished product so from the manufacturing concern perspective it is going to have some raw material as well so it is going to have some steel as well it is going to have some work in process so some cars may be there which are not complete as of now which are not 100 percent complete maybe painting is yet to be done maybe steering wheel is yet to be fixed maybe seats are to be uh, uh, fixed in the car so these things may be pending so such kind of cars they are going to be called as work in process and there may be some finished goods there may be some cars which are absolutely ready to be transferred to dealerships for a trading concern it is only going to have finished goods it is not going to have any raw material or work in process it is only going to have the finished goods which are going to be there for the purpose of reselling or the purpose of trading so now we can easily say that the type of inventories they are related to the nature of the business if it is a trading concern then its inventory would primarily comprise of the products which are purchased for resale in the existing form we are not going to change the form of the products plus we may also have some inventory of different items like there is a car dealership it is going to have say some stationery with it some cartons with it some wrapping paper with it so all these kinds of supplies are also going to form part of inventory if you talk about it from the manufacturing concerns perspective now this is this is a concern which is which, which is transforming the raw material into the final product so for it the inventory is going to comprise of the raw material it is going to comprise of the work in process and it is going to be it is going to comprise of the finished products also there can be some other parts or factory supplies which are going to be used for the purpose of processing of raw material in the finished product so this is how the nature of the business and the type of inventory they are related so i believe now we can easily answer this question that the inventories of a trading concern would comprise mainly of the products which are purchased for resale in their existing form so answer is going to be option number c now let's move on to the next question inventories should be valued at this is a very very important question being asked in many competitive exams it's a very simple one which you can easily remember 
inventories should be valued at cost net realizable value lower of cost and net realizable value higher of cost and net realizable value or none of the above so let's talk about valuation of inventory now inventory is simply the stock which is kept in my shop suppose i may be a businessman i may be buying and selling the mobile phones i may have, have i may have certain phones with me in stock and i am going to resell them at a profit obviously now at the end of the year i am going to have certain stock of the mobile phones with me there may be some mobile phones which are absolutely new which are to be sold to the customers and i am going to charge a huge profit margin for it and there may be some mobile phones which with me which i had purchased earlier now the new models have come now i may not be able to sell them at the price at which i wanted to sell them or i may even not be able to sell them at the cost at which i bought them initially so now how to value the inventory now i have certain mobile phones okay i have some mobile phones suppose i say uh, i have 100 mobile phones with me okay and these 100 mobile phones i have got it at the cost of rupees uh, say uh, i have got it all of them i have got it at a cost of rupees 10 lakh and now i have to sell these mobile phones and i took take a look at the selling price of these mobile phones the selling price is going to be rupees 11 lakh now is is it wise to value these mobile phones at rupees 11 lakh can i mention in my balance sheet i have this much of stock can i mention in my uh, trading and profit and loss account i have 11 lakh worth of stock just think of it from the conservatism perspective we already know that conservatism is an important principle in accounting prudence is a very important accounting principle it says you can anticipate all the all the losses all the expenses but never anticipate any gains if you are expecting any gain just do not record it in your books as of now until and unless it is certain so until and unless i sell my mobile phones actually for rupees 11 lakh i should not record them at rupees 11 lakh i should only record it at rupees 10 lakh or if the case was vice versa suppose the value of of the mobile phones it was rupees 9 lakh only it was rupees 9 lakh only now in this particular case again the prudence is going to come in conservatism going, is going to come in and it is going to say uh, you have some amount of mobile phones you have some amount of stock with you but let's face it you are going to incur loss on it so if any loss is going to be there you have to book it now so you should not mention your inventory at 10 lakhs you should rather mention it at 9 lakh only you should book this loss of rupees 1 lakh now only so this is why we follow this principle that inventories they should be valued at lower of cost and net realizable value net realizable value you can simply say this is the market price this is we can say in crude terms it is the market price though in refined terms nrv and market price are going to be definitely different but from a layman's perspective we can say cost or market price whichever is lower we are going to use this principle for the purpose of valuing the inventory okay i believe you have understood this particular point now question is going to come into your mind what do we mean by this cost and what do we mean by this net realizable value so let's try to understand these concepts as well so let's understand about the meaning of the terms cost and net realizable value so suppose we are a manufacturing concern and we are manufacturing cars and for the purpose of manufacturing cars we are going to have some inventories with us we are going to have some finished goods we are going to have some work in progress and we are also going to have some raw material with us now the now the question arises how we are going to find out the cost of this particular material so now let's try to find it out suppose we have we have 100 cars which are ready with us 100 cars they are absolutely ready this is the finished goods these are 100 cars which are absolutely ready with us now in this particular case what is going to be the cost of the 100 cars we are going to say everything we have incurred on making this these cars we are going to include it in the cost so any cost of the materials that we acquired any cost we spent on processing of the material to convert it into finished good we are going to include it in the cost and now what is going to be the net realizable value of them net realizable value is going to be the price at which you expect to sell these cars okay so suppose uh, the cost of the 100 cars i computed suppose it comes out to say rupees 1 crore it comes out to rupees 1 crore 
Now, when we talk about the net realizable value, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about finding this NRV for the cars and I take a look at the market price at which I am going to sell them. So the market price turns out to rupees 1.5 crore. I'm going to sell these at 1.5 crore. But now to sell these cars, I may have to incur say other expenses, other selling expenses like I may have to pay, I may have to pay a commission for selling each car. And for selling of these cars, I may have to incur commission of say total, uh, say total 0.1 crore. I have to pay rupees 10 lakh in commission. So ultimately, I'm going to only get rupees 1.4 crore. So net realizable value that I'm going to have is only 1.4 crore. So I may value it at 1 crore or 1.4 crore, whichever is lower. So I'm going to value it at 1 crore only. So this is something which you have to remember. Now suppose there are another set of cars with me. Okay. Now there are another set of cars with me and they are not yet complete. Okay. They are not yet complete. They are work in process. So there is a batch of 50 cars. It is not yet complete. And I find out the cost that I have incurred on these cars as of now. So I get to know uh, that I have spent 40 lakhs on these, these cars as of now. Okay. And if I talk about the net realizable value of these particular cars, net realizable value of these cars, this, this value is going to be uh, say 75 lakhs is going to be the value. Now, no one is going to buy a car which is still in process. Everyone is going to, going to buy the finished car only. So now from this 75 lakh, this is the value of a finished car. I will have to reduce the expenses of completion of the car. Suppose I have to spend another 10 lakh on completing the car as of now. So I'm going to subtract it from this 75 lakh because this is going to be spent on completing the car. And in this case also, I may have to pay certain commission on selling cars. Uh, suppose I have to pay 5 lakhs as my commission as well. So this amount is going to come to the 60 lakh. Again, the cost or NRV, whichever is lower, I'm going to value my cars at 40 lakh. So this is how the things they work in. Uh, they work in practice. Okay, we find out the cost, we find out the NRV and we do whichever is lower as per accounting standard too. So here you can have a glance at how the inventories they are valued. So may, we may have certain raw materials with us. The raw material it is going to be valued at cost only. We may have some finished goods and work in process. And for these goods, we are going to follow the principle lower of the cost or net realizable value. Now this cost means cost of purchase, cost at which you purchase the raw material. Just also add the conversion cost, the cost you incur to convert the raw material into the finished product. Plus also add the other costs if they are to be included in the cost of the inventory. And on the other side, we have this figure of NRV. You have to take, take the realizable value or the selling price of the vehicle. You have to reduce the selling expenses and you have to reduce the estimated cost of completion if the product is still work in process. So this is something which you should sit in your mind, which you should remember from examination perspective. So inventory should be valued at, you should never forget it. They are valued at lower of cost and NRV that is net realizable value. So answer clearly is option number C. Now here is a very interesting question. As per first in first out FIFO inventory valuation, it's assumed that the oldest inventory items are sold first. The latest inventory items are sold first. The accountant decides which items are to be valued at what cost. The businessman decides which items are to be valued at what cost or none of the above. Now, friends, we have sort of three main methods for inventory valuation. Okay. Uh, these methods, they are FIFO method. Uh, it, there is a LIFO method. There is a weighted average method. Okay. There are three sorts of method which can be there by which we can value our inventory and the value of the inventory in all the cases is going to be different. So that's why uh, we have to provide in the notes to accounts, which method of account, which method of inventory valuation are we following so that the user of the accounting information, the user of the financial statements can uh, make out, okay, this method is being followed by this particular company. LIFO method is not adopted. It's not allowed to adopt the LIFO method. Generally FIFO or weighted average is going to be adopted. Okay, so now let's learn about these three methods, how the things work out in these three methods. So let's try to understand all the three methods. So first is FIFO method. FIFO, it is short for, it is short for first in, first out. Jo pehle aayega, wo pehle jayega. 
So let's suppose we have a business and this business is of trading of the shirts and during the month we are being told about that we have bought shirts at two separate occasions. One time we bought 100 shirts at $1.10. Next time the prices they went high and we bought 200 shirts at $1.20. At the end of the month the business had sold 50 shirts. Now in this particular case we are being asked to value the inventory and value the cost of goods sold. So we bought 100 plus 200 that is we bought 300 shirts and of these we have sold we have sold 50 and 250 are still in still in stock with us. This 50 that we have sold is going to be the goods sold. So we if we have to find the cost of it it is going to be cost of goods sold it is uh, abbreviated as COGS and 250 is going to be the closing stock or the inventory with us. So let's try to value it with FIFO method. So FIFO method says first in first out. First you bought 100 shirts at $10 okay and then you got 200 shirts at $20. Now we have sold 50 shirts. Now 50 shirts are, is, are going to be sold, sold from which lot? Whether the first one or the second one as per FIFO from the first one. So out of these 100 shirts, out of these 100 shirts we have sold 50 shirts. So now we are only going to have 50 shirts from the first lot left. So the cost of goods sold it is going to be we have sold 50 shirts which were procured at dollar 10 each so this is going to be dollar 500 and what is the, going to be the value of the closing stock now the value of the closing stock closing inventory uh, we have 250 we have 250 shirts with us as of now and we know that these 250 shirts 50 are from the first lot 50 are from the first lot and 200 are from the second lot. So 50 they are going to be valued at dollar 10 and 200 they are going to be valued at dollar 20. So this is going to be 500 and this is going to be 4000. Uh, so this would come out to 4500 dollar. Okay, this is the value of the closing stock and this is the value of the shirts sold or the cost of goods sold. So this is how the things work out when we talk about FIFO method. First in first out. Jo shirt pehle kharida, us shirt ko pehle becha mana jayega. So, इसीलिए यहाँ पे हम जो पहले खरीदी हुई वाली shirts हैं, उनको अपनी cost of goods sold का part बनाएंगे। और जो हमारी shirts बची हुई हैं closing stock के अंदर, that would be that would be from the latest stock that we have acquired. So, this is how the valuation is being done. So, this is how we have computed the cost of goods sold and the remaining inventory value. Now, another important thing which you must remember here, a question may be asked on this aspect as well. Uh, just understand this thing, okay? So now 100 shirts at dollar 10 and then at dollar 20, 200 shirts were bought. So this is a classic case of inflation. The prices they have increased very much. We bought the first lot at dollar 10 and the prices doubled while buying the second lot. So the inflation is going to kick in in this particular case. So in in inflationary situations, let us understand what is going to happen in the FIFO method. So in the FIFO method, in the case of inflation, this is happening, okay? So this is happening that our cost of goods sold is going to comprise of the lower value. This is going to comprise of the goods we have bought earlier at lower prices. This dollar ten, this dollar ten is the lower price. So our cost of goods sold is definitely going to be lower. If our cost of goods sold is less, naturally our profits are going to be higher. Suppose the selling price of these shirts, uh, these 50 shirts that we have sold, uh, we have sold them at a to total of say dollar 1000. And what is our cost of goods sold? Our cost of goods sold is only dollar 500. So we have made a profit as per the FIFO method of dollar 500. So this is the profit that we have made. In the FIFO method, the cost is going to be less because earlier the prices were less. So cost is going to be less and profit is going to be higher. This is something which you should remember. Also in this particular case, our inventory, our inventory is going to be valued at the latest price. Okay, this inventory is $4,500 and most of it, 200 shirts, they are at the latest price, which is $20. Okay, so our inventory is going to be, our inventory is going to be at the latest price. So this is something which you should remember. Inventory at latest price and cost of goods sold at the oldest price. So this is something you should remember. Now let's talk about this another interesting method. This is LIFO method practically not followed, not permitted. So this LIFO method, it means last in, first out. It says, jo last me aaya, jo baad me aaya, usko pehle nikalenge, usko pehle bechenge. 
So accordingly, cost of goods sold and closing stock is going to be valued here. So let's try to compute the value of COGS and closing inventory. So again, we have sold 50 shirts here. Okay. Now in the case of these 50 shirts which are sold, now we are going to assume that those which were those which arrived last, they are the first to be sold. So 200 shirts, they arrived last at dollar 20. Okay. And we sold them first. We sold them first. So we would assume that these 50 shirts uh, at dollar 20, they have been sold. So now our cost of goods sold is going to be 50 into 20. That is $1,000. This is going to be the cost of goods sold of the 50 shirts that we have sold. If you talk about the closing inventory value, we have 250 shirts in stock with us. So in this particular case, what is going to happen? Uh, what is going to happen here? So let's try to understand it as well. So now we are going to say that these 250 shirts, 100 shirts are from the first lot. Okay. And 150 shirts are from the second lot. Accordingly, we have to find the cost of the uh, closing stock. 100 into dollar 10 first lot, second lot 150 into dollar 20. This is going to be 3000. This is going to be 1000. So this would total out to become dollar 4000. This is going to be the value of the closing inventory. So in this particular case, the cost of goods sold, it has increased and the value of the closing stock, it has declined. So if there is a case of inflation, so this is a case of inflation, the prices have increased. So in the case of inflation, in the LIFO method, we are seeing that cost of goods sold, it is, it is at the latest prices, cost of goods sold is rather higher. And, and if you talk about the closing stock or the closing inventory, it is valued lower. It is valued at the earlier prices, so it is lower. So, so with the same figures, let's try to compute profit here as well. Suppose the selling price of 50 shirts, it was $1,000. In the previous case, in the FIFO case, we had made a profit of, we had made a profit of how much? We had made a profit of $500. But in this particular case, our cost of goods sold, this again is how much? This again is dollar $1,000. So the profits, they are nil. No profits we have made here. So in the case of FIFO, LIFO method, you can see that our profits have declined in the case of inflation. But in FIFO method, we had enough profits that we generated. So this is how the calculation would work out in the LIFO method. As already explained to you, COGS is $1,000 and closing inventory values $4,000. Now there is another method, weighted average method. Now this weighted average method, it talks about finding a weighted average. So in this particular case as well, 100 shirts at $10, 200 at $20. So what is going to be the weighted average? So you must have heard about this concept of weighted mean or weighted average, weighted arithmetic mean, something like that. Okay. So 100 shirts at 100 shirts at $10. 200 shirts at dollar 20. So these are something which are weights here and this is the value of the X. We find out the WX uh, and this would become 1000. This would become 4000 and the total would become 5000 and the total of weights it is going to be 300. So what we do? We do Sigma WS divided by Sigma W 5000 by 300. So this is simply the total cost and this is simply the number of shirts that we are having. So we divide the two, we would get an average cost. This average cost is going to be how much? Uh, 50 by 3, this would be around $16.67. So this is going to be the uh, weighted average cost of one shirt. Now here we have sold 50 shirts, 50 shirts have been sold. So cost of goods sold is going to be 50 into $16.67. We have 250 shirts in closing stock with us. So this is going to be 250 into $16.67. So in this particular case, the interesting thing is that this value, it remains same for the cost of goods sold and for the closing stock as well. The 16.67 is going to remain. Either we compute COGS, either we compute the closing stock. But just initially, we have to do this calculation. We have to find out this weighted average cost of one shirt. And accordingly, we can find out the cost of goods sold and the closing stock. So in this particular case, this is how the calculations have been done. 50 into 16.67. Uh, this would be the cost of goods sold. And again, in this particular case, you would find that if the selling price, it was dollar $1,000, like we assumed in the previous two cases, uh, the cost is something $833.50. This is the cost. And how much is going to be the profit in this particular case? If you subtract it, this is going to be 0.5. 
this is going to be 6 and this is going to be again 6 and this is going to be 166.50. So this is going to be your profit in this particular case. The, the profits are neither very high, neither very low, neither very high as we saw in the FIFO case, neither very low as we saw in the LIFO case. So in the case of this weighted average method, we have the profits weighted out. We have an sort of an average profit being made out. So you can see how these values they are being arrived at. Cost of goods sold is a bit higher and similarly you can see the inventory is valued at an average cost. So this seems rather a good, good method. This seems rather a more practical method to be followed. But we have the FIFO and weighted average method which are being followed, uh, which are being followed by the industries. LIFO method, this, it is not allowed, it is not being followed. So now we can easily answer this question. We have understood the whole story behind the inventory valuation methods. As per first in first out FIFO inventory valuation, it is assumed that the oldest inventory items, they are sold first. We assume the earliest to arrive, jo pehle aaya, wo pehle bik jayega. Jo pehle cost aayi thi hamari items purchase karne ki, wahi cost hamari cost of goods sold hone wali hai. So the answer is going to be option number A. Now let's move to the next question, the last question. Now I would like you guys to take lead in this particular question and try to answer this one because we have already sort of discussed the concept behind it. Which of the following would not be classified as inventory cost as per AS2? So remember when we talked about cost or NRV, whichever is lower, I explained to you what is meant by the concept of cost. So let's see if you have got it right or not. Cost of acquisition of raw material, freight incurred to carry the material to the factory, Cost incurred to convert the material into finished stock, storage cost of the finished goods, all of the above would be classified as inventory cost. So here we are being asked which would not be classified. This not word is very important here. Now if you talk about what is going to be the cost of inventory, now this AS is very clear about it. It says the cost of inventory is going to include the cost of acquisition, the cost at which you acquired the inventory plus the cost which you incurred which you incurred to bring the inventory to the present location and to the present condition of the inventory now suppose you acquired certain raw materials you will you will include its cost it is going to be the cost of acquisition you transferred to the raw material to the factory you bought raw material to the factory you paid freight for it you paid some amount for it this is also going to be included plus you some spent some amount on processing this inventory to turn it into finished goods so this is also going to be included and then you are going to arrive at your cost of inventory now one thing that you have you have to remember here is, is that once you have converted your product into a finished good, then any storage cost that you are incurring, suppose you have you have produced the finished good, you have produced all these pens and now for before selling them, before you get the orders for these pens, you have to keep them in a warehouse because you have to maintain some stock with you. Whenever order comes, you can fulfill that particular order immediately. So this st storage cost, this warehousing cost of this particular pen is not going to be included in the cost of inventory. So here we are being told that include cost of acquisition, include the cost of bringing the material to the present location to the factory and also include the cost which is required to convert this material into the finished stock and nothing else after it is to be included in the cost of inventory. So this is something you should remember. So what are the exclusions from the cost of inventory? So it's very clear that we have to exclude the storage cost. The storage cost is not to be included. Also any administrative overheads, they are not to be included. Administrative overhead would include the salaries of the people involved in it, uh, the salary of the warehouse keeper. So all the admin expenses, the stationery being used by the admin staff. So these all have not to be included. Uh, selling and distribution cost. Again, you do not have to include it in the cost of inventory. You have to exclude this particular thing from the cost of inventory. And if there is any abnormal waste of material that you have made any abnormal cost that you have incurred just do not include it in your inventory because if you uh, if you include abnormal items abnormal cost in your inventory your cost is going to shoot up and your profit figure is going to come down and this may not be the accurate figure of the profits so any abnormal amount excluded from costing so the answer to this particular question is going to be Option number D, the storage cost of finished goods are not to be included in inventory cost as per S2. 
So thank you friends. This was our discussion with regard to accounting standard two, which deals with inventory valuation. I believe I have been able to explain to you the different aspects of the valuation of the inventory. Uh, so this was all about today's discussion. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care. All the best.